From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Wednesday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And good morning to Miller, morning. a man you'll want to listen to today because uh, things are shifting around out there. Absolutely. Yeah, old man winter. Definitely uh, not taking a nap today. We've got uh, we've actually got snow out there to talk about right now. Let's take a live uh, look at uh, Red Lodge. It's really coming down on the mountain. And we'll continue to see that as we go along today. You could get several inches of additional snow on the on the mountain today. We've got snow here in Billings already, and that's going to last through the morning and maybe through early afternoon. You can see as we take a live shot there, courtesy of the Stockman Bank weather cam at the airport right now, we're looking at 27. Winds are calm now moving forward, maybe as early as today, but definitely by tomorrow, those winds will be an issue as they're going to start to pick back up again. I'll explain why that's the case with the main forecast coming up. Some temperatures across the area right now, we're sitting at 24 in Ingemar, Roundup at 25, Broadview at 24, down to my, uh, my friends in Belfry sitting at 28, over in Gardner sitting at about 25 right now. So highs today, 20s and 30s, you can see that moisture moving through in, uh, in the form of snow. We may have some more rain and snow tomorrow, and then next week, maybe a big cool down coming. We'll take a look, coming up, Victoria. <laughs> We start with major crime news this morning. A man is dead, killed in a shootout with Billings Police. No officers were injured. It happened just before 8 o'clock last night on the 100 block of 7th Street West near Central. Witnesses tell us a man was seen outside with a gun, prompting a call to 911. At some point after police arrived, neighbors recall hearing about 12 gunshots. Police Chief Rich St. John will reveal more details in a news conference later this morning. And the shooting is just another in a series to rock the Magic City in recent weeks. For more on a violent start to 2022, we send it over to Andrea Lutz. Andrea, where are we at with shooting investigations so far? You know, Victoria, it seems like this is something that we have been reporting on nonstop, but even beyond Billings, the state of Montana as a whole has started the new year off with a tragic start. You might remember this back in January, we tallied up how many shootings there have been across the state, figuring out there had been about eight deadly shootings in just that one month alone. Well, in Billings, shootings seem to have grabbed a younger demographic recently with two teens shot and killed just in the Billings Heights. Police are still investigating both of those incidents, but back in January, 15 year old Cohen Parker was shot and killed near Castle Rock Park. Then an off duty Yellowstone County deputy was grazed in the face by a bullet following an altercation at a Billings bar. Following that, two men were found shot and dead inside a crashed truck on the Billings South Side, and then the shooting death of a 16 year old also in the Heights. That one's still being investigated as suspicious. Well, recently, Police Chief Rich St. John told us that peace, police are seeing an awful lot of juveniles with firearms, adding that they're very quick to settle their disputes with guns. Overall, we want to let you know that Montana has the sixth highest rate of gun deaths in the country. So it's something that seems like we will continue to report on. Victoria. Right. It sounds like it's time to talk to our youth about gun safety. Very yeah. serious stuff there. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Andrea. Well, the man who killed two people and injured two others, including Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer, is appealing his conviction with the state Supreme Court. Jonathan Birch's attorney has not revealed what grounds the appeal is based on. Birch is currently serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. He shot and killed Shelly Hayes and Julie Blanchard during a road rage incident in Missoula in 2019, as well as shooting and injuring Trooper Palmer and Casey Blanchard. This morning, there are no protesters on the Montana-Canada border. For two weeks, protesters on the Canada side have been blocking entry at the Sweetgrass Crossing in Toole County. But after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoked emergency powers, allowing the government to freeze bank accounts of protesters and organizations supporting them, the demonstrators went home. While police made a couple of arrests, they say the protests were overall peaceful. There could be a special session in the Montana legislature in the coming weeks. Republican lawmakers are pushing to redraw the boundaries of Montana's Public Service Commission districts for the 2022 election. Governor Greg Gianforte says he will only call the special session if there is ample support for a particular new map. On March 4th, the panel of judges will hold a trial on PSC districts because a pending lawsuit claims the current districts are unconstitutional because their populations are unequal. During that trial, while the judges may draw the districts themselves, something the GOP wants to avoid. So if action is taken during a special session, it would negate that lawsuit. I don't want to start the, uh, to establish 
the authority that this, that this judge, a federal judge, does not have constitutionally. Some Republicans also want to use this session to create a select committee to investigate election processes. Governor Gianforte and other GOP leaders will not support that aspect of the session. Now we go to Glendive, where the community is rallying around seven people who lost almost everything in a downtown fire. The Ponderosa building, which is home to several apartments, is a total loss. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt in Sunday night's fire, but residents were forced to leave with nothing but the clothes on their back. Local nonprofit Lyft is helping them get back on their feet. The organization says food and clothing are the biggest needs right now and can be dropped off at the Glendive Tractor Supply Company. Well, there's another unusual twist in the legal battle between a transgender activist from Billings and conservative pastor J.D. Hall of Sydney. Hall is filing for bankruptcy, essentially blocking the libel lawsuit filed against him. Lobbyist and activist Adrian Jewart sued Hall in his online publication, the Montana Daily Gazette, last September. Jewart says Hall falsely reported she intimidated a Republican lawmaker during the 2021 Montana legislature. Jewart's lawyer says Hall is trying to to avoid accountability by filing bankruptcy. In other news this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he doesn't want a war in Ukraine and is willing to negotiate an end to the crisis there. Russian officials say they've even started withdrawing troops from the region, but the White House has greeted those claims with skepticism. CBS's Laura Podesta has all the latest developments. The U.S. and NATO remain locked in a standoff with Russia over Ukraine. Our analysts indicate that they remain very much in a threatening position. Yesterday, Russian leader Vladimir Putin said he's open to talks aimed at averting a war. Putin said Russia is pulling back some of the soldiers it had deployed along the Ukrainian border. But U.S. officials said they could not verify that claim. Right now, Russia has more than 150,000 troops encircling Ukraine and Belarus along Ukraine's border. An invasion remains distinctly possible. Mr. Biden said the U.S. would continue to look for a peaceful end to the crisis. As long as there is hope of diplomatic resolution that prevents the use of force and avoids incredible human suffering that would follow, we will pursue it. The White House warned that a Russian invasion would likely trigger sanctions against Moscow that could drive oil and gas prices even higher. If Russia decides to invade, there could be consequences here at home. Defending democracy and liberty is never without cost. Ukraine says hackers targeted its defense ministry and two state banks on Tuesday. The source of the cyber attacks is still unknown. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Putin has said he wants NATO to stop its expansion into Eastern Europe. He says the growth of the alliance poses a threat to Russia's national security. We were able to speak with a Billings woman who spent the first 35 years of her life in Ukraine. Irina Gabriel's parents and brothers still live there. She says the family is worried because her brother just retired from the Ukrainian military. Gabriel tells us there's a number of people from Russia and Ukraine living in Billings and they're supporting each other right now. She says all they can do is hope for peace. Gabriel also hopes she can get together with family sooner than later. It's very difficult because I worry about uh, when next time I see them. We have a lot of family in Russia and we always were friendly and they were come over to uh, Ukraine and now they are afraid. Now in other news, Remington has settled a lawsuit stemming from the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. The gunmaker produced the AR-15 that was used in the massacre. Remington agreed to pay $73 million to victims' families that brought the lawsuit. It's believed to be the largest settlement of its kind. Prosecutors want the former Minnesota police officer who killed Dante Wright to spend seven years in prison. Kim Potter will be sentenced on Friday. Prosecutors filed a memorandum with the court asking for a sentence of 86 months. Potter was convicted of first and second degree manslaughter in December. She shot and killed Wright during a traffic stop last April. She claimed she mistakenly drew her gun instead of her taser. Potter's lawyers are asking for a lesser sentence, citing their client's lack of criminal history.
Britain's Prince Andrew has agreed to settle a sex abuse lawsuit filed by Virginia Dufre. The 38-year-old says she was a teenager when billionaire Jeffrey Epstein trafficked her to the British royal. In the brief one-page settlement, Dufre agrees to dismiss her sexual abuse lawsuit after Prince Andrew makes a substantial donation to her charity in support of victims' rights. It comes just weeks after a New York judge rejected the prince's attempt to dismiss the case. The number of people getting a COVID booster shot right now has reached an all-time low. About 64% of Americans are fully vaccinated against the virus, while just 28% have received a booster shot. The CDC says the pace of people getting boosted is the lowest it's been since it first recommended the extra shot in the fall. And before we take a break, a successful program for teenagers is breaking down the stigmas around mental health. q 2 Zolina Howder has more. A teacher at Billings West High School is using art as guidance, helping students manage their mental health challenges in a creative way, as well as extinguishing the stigma that comes with talking about mental health. Students struggle from all sorts of things. They have stressors every single day. Just like this art, there's a lot more happening in this West High classroom than what meets the eye. It's been really helpful in my anxiety, my finding my identity. Art teacher Tori Wardrip calls it creative courage. Creative courage is just a safe space for them to come and express themselves free of judgment um, without fear. An outlet for students to voice their feelings. For the past 30 years, Montana has ranked among the top five states for suicides. Throw in a pandemic and students have faced more mental health challenges. During the 12 week program, Tori holds discussions and check-ins with students. The topic changes weekly from coping with depression and anxiety to healthy alternatives to self-harm. Then we have an art activity. So that could be anywhere, anything from um, comfort boxes, which is where you express and portray your challenges on the exterior and on the interior. You put things that are positive to help sort of lift you out of that. Tori leads students through meditation and mindfulness techniques. They'll create mood mandalas and mood trackers to pinpoint how they're feeling. You can use those visual aspects to say things that you wouldn't be able to verbally. Creative Courage was created back in 2017 when Tori was at Lewis and Clark Middle School. One of her former students, Joe LaVey, attended Creative Courage in 2018. I think Creative Courage was one of the few places that I felt 100% safe. Um, at least I had a place to express myself without being judged. And the inspiration behind the program came from a very personal place when Tori herself was struggling with clinical depression. Had I known at a younger age that it was okay to not be okay, it wouldn't have been so difficult for me to come out and start to get help. Now, Tori uses her own struggles to guide her students towards a better headspace, one day at a time. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Thank you so much, Alina, and thank you for watching Billings' only local morning newscast with us this morning. Coming up, we'll show you how Montana is keeping her tribe's traditions alive. The time is now 5.42. Stay with us. Miller's forecast is coming up next.